Welcome to Megapath Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today let's talk Fear the Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 13. I loved it, and I know I'm going to get called crazy for loving this because this is more like an episode from Season 2 of The Walking Dead, which is hailed as one of the worst seasons because it's on a farm the whole time. There's a lot of talking. There's a lot of moral decisions, uh, you know, right and wrong, and what do we do, those kind of conflicts that I, however... Enjoy the hell out of uh, The Walking Dead Season 2, and I can watch it over and over again. I love it. I think there's powerful dialogue, a powerful look at the characters, and that is also why I love this episode of Fear the Walking Dead, because when you get that powerful dialogue or that look inside the characters, uh, their characteristics, you start building this emotional well, you know, to characters you love and to characters you hate. The emotional well to characters you love, it builds up and it affects you emotionally when anything bad happens to them or if they're in any bad situations and the tension is now replaced with that emotional like sadness you know what I mean like the more you start building an emotional bank let's call it for Travis the more you'll be affected when anything bad happens to him the more tension you'll feel when he's ever in a tight spot that same thing is applied with an evil character like Chris for example your emotional bank will fill up with how much you hate the character how much you're gonna get rewarded when that character dies they do this on a ton of shows that have good guys and bad guys. They want to fill your emotional bank with either love or hate, you know, sympathy, empathy, whatever. They want to fill it with that, a good writer, so that way they can utilize that later. And I think they did a great job with this. This episode started out strong. Now, I do point some weak moments out in the reaction rant video. That is going to be uploaded probably tomorrow or later today if I have the time. So essentially what I mean is watch the reaction video because I go into detail on a lot more scenes specifically as I'm watching it but the opening is powerful I love that imagery there I love what they did with fading the music out and having Travis fighting the crowd to get to Madison loved all that and then at the end of the episode they have Chris's gang of no good piece of shit assholes getting to the hotel and they don't look like people who need help they look like people who want to take advantage of people who are offering to help, you know? They don't need shelter. They want to take what you have. That's at least the look. I'll, I'll be disappointed, again, if they're like, okay, teach, you know, your way was the right way. We had it all wrong. We tried to survive out there, and it was hard, yada, yada, yada. I'll be disappointed if they, if they go that way. I would prefer them to just stay on course, stay true to their character, and be there to take and not there seeking help, seeking shelter. Now, with this episode, it's an emotional episode I feel more so for the parents uh, because they can relate to some of the stuff the characters are going through, especially when Travis is on the balcony and he's talking about in the past, previously, before this series even started, in the timeline of him and his failed marriage to Liza and his promise to protect Chris, what Chris was going through through the breakup and the marriage and all that, yada, yada, yada. And that shines a light on uh, Chris's character. And I think it, it humanizes him because you see him in this episode. Uh, again, I, I think this is great writing for this episode because you see him as a villain doing shitty things like trapping his dad, grabbing his dad, tricking him, telling him something that's, you know, a trait that is someone who's seeking help. They want help. Help me, dad. Imagine what these people will do to me if they're they're willing to kill someone they knew since they're six years old then he traps his dad he tricks him using that that's slimy that's grimy but then in the same episode you have the writing show through his conversation with madison that he was such a sweet boy when he was little and he was affected in such a negative way through the divorce so it kind of opens it up where you feel bad for him yet you still see him as the villain i think that was just a, a great way to mold this a villain in in a very human way now with Madison and Alicia I talk about this in my other video but I thought the father was a drug addict you know and here it appears that he committed suicide he left a note saying I love you all but enough is enough now we don't know what enough is enough I don't know that's odd because it looks like the daughter was someone who was doing good for for her entire life that's basically everything they have propped her character up on this is the kid that was doing good raising herself getting straight days the, ne the neglected child so to speak and the other kid was handle with care troublemaker drug addict you know what I mean we don't know if there's anything else in the marriage that was causing problems other than Nick's 
drug addiction. You know, was it causing fights between the, the parents or what? I don't know, but I'm curious to see if they they reveal what enough is enough is, or at least Madison can shed some light on it. But with that being said, I love the scenery, especially in this episode, the landscape, where they were when it's showing Travis and Chris's adventure, little side adventure. And I do enjoy that Travis got back to the hotel, even though it was a coincidence. I think it's better that Madison put the light on for Nick and Travis made it. I think if Madison put the light on for Travis and he coincidentally saw it, I think that's too far out there. So I do give the writers credit for having the light for Nick and not Travis because that's too much of a huge coincidence. We're going to have to fight the huge coincidence with um, fucking Chris making it to the hotel too because you have Travis making it. That night it appears that Chris makes it to the hotel. Yes, obviously people are going to say that's too convenient, that's too da 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 but me, I just want juicy story. I don't care if it's too soon. You know, they just parted ways in this episode, and now they're at the hotel, the same hotel Travis just got to. I don't care if it's too soon, just give it to me. I want it, you know? I want this story to explode. I want it to build up and explode, and it's looking like this group that Chris is with is the group that's going to be attacking or causing problems at the hotel, and we already know from the last episode that the group that Nick was dealing with the drugs, cutting the drugs, and giving the people in the warehouse the drugs, that group is going to be attacking where Nick is at. Chances are they're going to split these up partially where most of the attack on the hotel, I'm hoping, will be in the next episode and we'll get a setup for the Colonia, you know, in next episode. And the episode after that, we'll get the main attack or the main finale with the Colonia. Am I saying that wrong? With where Nick's at. <laughs> and then a little bit with Travis and her survivors. Long story short, they have to leave the hotel. I don't think there's any other way because this hotel is a real hotel. The moment I saw that in the backstory, I knew they have to be leaving. I'll be shocked if they're still at the hotel in season three, put it that way. So you heard it here first. Yes, already start making your comparisons with the hotel to the farm from The Walking Dead. Uh, I don't think they're going to burn it down though. So we can, already, we can already look at this in a realistic way and try to guess how they're going to have to leave. They're letting the refugees in, so especially with Chris's group and those assholes. So we could probably already say that they're going to get run out of that hotel. I don't know uh, how many are going to get killed, if any really, because the focus is only on a small group of characters in the main group, so they can't really afford to lose a lot of them. There's throwaway characters, definitely. I mean, I think it would be too cheap if the main characters that we know from season one are the only ones to make it out of the hotel. I think that's too cheap. But anyway, I love this episode. I thought it was great, and I can already hear the fans saying, you are nuts. This was one of the worst episodes. It was nothing but dialogue. I don't care. I loved it. It was a great look inside the characters. I think the characters, for the most part, weren't doing dumb shit, you know? I love the dialogue, love the interactions, and the characters that did do bad shit did bad shit on purpose because they're bad people, so I enjoy that. Anyway, I loved it. I think this is probably the most enjoyment I've gotten to date from an episode of Fear the Walking Dead, and it was mostly family talking about their grief. <laughs> but I think they did it great. It sucked me in, it kept me in the whole time, and I enjoy the shit out of it, and I am really looking forward to the next episode. So put your thoughts and opinions in that comment box. Do you think I'm crazy? Let me know. I'm done talking. It's your turn. Subscribe now.